What up guys, it's Chisai here, and today I'm reading Red Kayak Chapter 5. Let's begin. It was Ben, but I drew closer. I could see that he was motionless, his small body hunched forward. The back of, the, of his life jacket caught on a jagged piece of old piling that just jutted, jutted out of the water like a rotten tooth. Ben, are you okay? I hollered, pulling the boat up alongside. His eyes weren't right. Move! I ordered Tilly. Right away, she jumped into the narrow space in, in the bow. I flipped the engine into neutral, neutral and reached over to pull in Ben. He was a lot heavier than I would have thought, probably because he was so waterlogged. The water was cold, too. I grabbed hold of the collar of his life jacket and summoned up all my strength to unhook him from the piece of wood. For a second, I lost my balance and nearly went in head first myself, but I fell backward instead, never go never letting go and managing to pull Ben into my boat on top of me. It was a rough landing, and I hit my elbow hard in the on the gunnel. I just hoped I hadn't hurt Ben. The first thing I did was get wet get his life get his wet life jacket off that and his soaked parka then i looked off my then i took off my own coat wrapped it around him and put my baseball cap on his head i rubbed his hands i patted his cheeks but he looked terrible lying there on on the damp wooden floor of my boat his pale pace his face pale as a sheet his eyes half shut and his lips as blue as a fresh blue, bruise i was scared to death because I didn't know what to do. I pulled the cell phone out of my pocket, but then my ha my hand was shaking so bad that the phone slipped right out of my grasp, hit the edge of the boat, and disappeared into the water. Oh no! I exclaimed. I looked back at Ben. He needed help. I had to I had to, qu to quit messing around. What do I do? What do I do? I was asking myself. What would Carl do? And I remembered those guys at the fire station talking about ABCs. The first thing you did in an emergency was the ABCs. A was air rays. I looked at Ben Ben's nose, clear as clear as far as I could tell. Quickly but gently, I knew you had to handle cold people carefully because their hearts their hearts can go kind of nuts and not be it bright. I rolled him onto his left side. The water trickled out of his mouth. Good, I said loud. Good, Ben. B was what? B was breathing. Ben was was Ben breathing. I pulled the chuck out of the flood in the motor and shut it off, so I could hear. But I couldn't hear anything. I put a finger on under, under his nose and I didn't feel anything. It was because my fingers were numb with cold. I start stared at his started at his chest, but I couldn't see it moving. Quickly, I felt with two fingers against his throat for that artery, the big one up there under your jaw. But I couldn't feel anything. No, I decided. Ben wasn't breathing. Quickly now, I knew I had I had to. I rolled Ben onto his back. Then I bent over, pinched his nose shut, covered his small mouth with mine, gave him two breaths. His lips were so cold they didn't they didn't feel right. I checked again. He still wasn't breathing. C, I remembered that C was circulation. Ben needed blood moving around. Oh God, I moaned, thinking I've got to do it. I've got to do CPR. I had been taught how. Dad and I took a class at the community center. We practiced on a dummy, and I watched Carl do it more than once. But what I remember? I tilted Ben's head back a little, pinched his nose again, and started by giving him one breath. Then I sat up, put the heel, heel of my right hand on his chest, covered it with my left, and pressed down. Five times I pressed down. Five compressions. Then I bent over for another breath. Then five compressions. Then another breath, then five compressions. I did not think about anything else as I did this. All I was doing was counting and pushing and breathing and praying inside that Ben would start breathing. Come on, Ben, I begged him. Fine, five compressions, then another breath. Breath, breathe, Ben, breathe. Ben needed to get to the ambulance fast. I had to get him down to the marina at Rock Hall. It wasn't that far, but I was going to get there. But I wasn't going to get there sitting in in here in the cr creek. Five compressions, another breath. I paused long enough to start the motor again and put the boat, put, put the boat gear in. Five compressions, one breath. Then I headed, headed my skiff to the right direction, grabbed the steering line and looped it around the outboard's handle. Back to bend, five compressions, one breath. Quickly, I reached the stern and wrapped it around a, a cleat to, 
to keep the motor straight. Five compressions, another breath. As if all that wasn't bad enough, it started to rain. Hard, too. I ignored it. I ignored the rain, the cold, the everything, and just continued. Five compressions, another breath. A, a quick check to make sure the boat was headed in the right direction. I glanced up and down, but there was no one in the river. No one. I headed I headed the boat downstream to Rock Hall and, and kept working on Ben. Five compressions, one breath. All the way down the river, with the rain lashing my face and blurring my eyes until I saw a whirling ambulance light, light at the landing in the distance. I kept on with the CPR. I knew I c couldn't stop. Maybe I should have. I could have slammed the boat into high gear and open the throttle, but I knew that Ben needed me to keep keep breathing into him. Five impressions, one breath. We were almost at the landing. I heard someone yell my name until they started barking. There were more people were hollering, and there was a bang of flashing lights, and at least two police cars, and an ambulance. It was a welcome blur. I continued with five impressions, one breath. Suddenly, Jim, Jimmy Landers, one of Carl's co-workers, was hollering real loud. Keep it up, Braddy, keep it up. That's it. Pull the boat in. We've got it. Don't stop, Brady. Things happened even faster than that. Jimmy was down beside me, taking over and then lifting Ben up into the dock, where Carl took him and continued the CPR. Then Jimmy jumped back into the dock, too. I saw Carl place his fingers on Ben's neck, checking for a pulse. Someone else has pulled in their boat while Carl and Jimmy kept working on Ben, even as they carried him into the ambulance. Before, before a policeman closed the doors, of the ambulance, Carl shouted, We've got a pulse! There wasn't time for him to say anything more. The doors were closed, and the ambulance took off. S siren railing, lights flashing, completely out of breath. I stood on the landing. I don't know, don't have a clue how I got there, and watched the lights disappear. I thought about how we were going to be on the rescue show. We were going to be on Rescue 9 9-1-1. I thought, all of us. I bet Tilly, too. A policeman came over and put his arms around my shoulders. Good job, son, he said. He led me over to his cruiser and gave gave me a jacket. Go ahead, get inside and warm up. My dog, I mumbled. I was so out of breath, I felt dizzy. I can't leave my dog in the boat. The policeman called for someone to get Tilly and both of us. Tilly and I got into the back seat of the cruiser in warm up. There's... They're talking, taking him over to the Lesberg Krebs Field, where they've got a, a medic of helicopter coming, the police man told me. He pulled out a notebook. When you're ready, I need you to give us a little report. I told him how I found Ben when the officers when the officers were satisfied. He offered me a ride home in his cruiser, but I wanted to get on my boat back, too. I assured him I could get home on my own. I don't doubt that, he said, grinning. The rain had let up some. So the policeman let us go. He said he would call both my parents and let them know I was okay, and and that I headed home. Back in the boat, I put Ben's life jacket and his soaked parka to one side and picked up my Orleans hat from the from the floor, where I had done CPR on Ben. I had must have fallen off when they picked him up, when they picked him up. I felt a little strange putting that hat on my head after what it just what it had just been through, but my head was cold and I needed to get started. Everyone else had left the landing by then. It was over. I began to feel a little relieved. Tilly and I headed up river, just as it started to rain hard again. Carl's voice, we've got a pulse, echoed in my ears, and I smiled. I think I could have driven through a blizzard right then. I felt both drained and, ex and exceeded. I'll tell you this, I'm not the type of person who prays very much. Hardly, hardly at all, really. But about a minute later, I stopped that boat right in the middle of the course of the river in the pouring rain to fold my hands. I just sat there with the engine in neutral, f resting my head against the fingers of my tightly folded hands because it had just hit me what happened. I'm not saying I cried, mind you, but I did have tears in my eyes. I thought of, about how it happened, about fate. I mean, what if Dad hadn't been working in the shop that Monday? Normally... He'd been out on the water. If he had been, he wouldn't have come to get me out of school. There wouldn't have been an extra person to check the little creeks and, co and coves the way I did. I knew then I would never be the same person anymore. Because that day at the Costa River, the day I lifted Ben off the p piling, I straightened the invisible line between life and death that runs down our lives every second, with every breath we take. 
and thanks to some good luck on timing, thanks to Tilly and God, too, I pulled ben Benjamin D'Angelo from one side to the other. Hope you guys enjoyed this chapter. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys!